Hey everybody! So, the Banner Saga. This is a game that um, it's just recently come out and I was going to do like a kind of quick look at the game, um, but I've enjoyed it so much that I thought, why not have a series? So I'm going to do a series, a playthrough of a, a, like a Let's Play. It's been a while since I've done like a proper Let's Play, um, rather than me just doing like kind of random runs in games. This will be like an actual Let's Play where I'll play the game properly and um, I think we should probably just restart the game. Um, uh, yes, okay, fine. Jolly good. So the story in the Banner Saga changes based on the choices you make. You will occasionally switch between lead characters, witnessing the story unfold from different perspectives. Indeed. So the gods are dead. Apparently. In their wake, man and giant survived through a tenuous alliance, driving black destroyers called Dredge deep into the northern wastes. Now as an era of growth and trade, life goes on, as it always does. Only one thing has stopped. The sun. So, you can kind of already get kind of like Game of thrones -y type vibes from it already. Several long months on the road. The first signs of snowfall accost us on our approach to Strand, the largest of the trade cities on the Val human borders, and our last collection before returning to the capital. Several days ago, the sun simply came to a stop in the sky. Though during these long winter days, none of us can be certain how long it has been this way. Some of the men in the caravan have taken it as a dire omen. I am not quick to superstition, but I myself will be glad to be done with this year's rounds. We have been warned by stranded travelers about the brigands on the path through Richhorn, our road home. Our captain seems unconcerned. Perhaps he is as eager as I to be done here. We will rest here this day and inquire further when we speak to the governor. So, awesome. <laughs> it looks fantastic. Like, as a game, it looks incredibly good. So, it, it's now basically, it basically just launches you straight into a battle to start off. It's like a tutorial type situation. Um, just now, the story we've started as these giant type guys, and um, I think they're called the Varl. And um, what we need to do is we need to, like, defeat these little human dudes that are pretty rubbish. So it says, you've arrived just in time. The chieftain in red um, and his men are now looking um, at a tougher fight than they bargained for. So us, basically, the or our guys. Um, so click and drag around to see your surroundings. So you can, like, right click and kind of have a look around and you can see what's going on. So they've basically, like, massacred quite a lot of the guards and there's been, like, a fight and we're here to, like, kind of protect this dude over here. So, the portraits in the bottom right, or the bottom left, rather, um, like designate the turn. Um, so basically, it goes like turn to us, turn to one of these dudes over here, turn to us again, turn to one of these dudes again, and so on and so forth. So it's like a turn-based type strategy that you've got to to implement. Um, what you get to do, I'm just going to click through all these things and I'll explain. So, um, so what we do is we can move around about the blue squares. We can force ourselves to move into the yellow segments as well by using our willpower. Willpower we get like a, a certain amount of. You see, we've got like. Um, five of five willpower so if we go over here 
it should reduce to four. Yep, so we've got four willpower. Then we click on the enemy and we can decide which we want to do. So we can either attack the enemy's strength or break his armor. Now, what breaking the armor will do will mean that our strength attacks will be better. So if we do, like, say, take two off the... Oh, hang on. Will it let me do... No, it's, uh, I still need to do the tutorial stuff. Okay. Um, so it's telling us to do the strength attack because we'll just kill them straight away. But what we could do is if we were weaker, if we didn't have enough attack, we could break their shield or their armor. And it means our next attack would be more powerful. So if we just do that, he'll be dead. And um, we get renowned. So renowned's kind of like a an upgrade currency. Um, you, you, it's just like your currency, your general stuff in the game. It's what you use to buy items, what you use to buy... Um, food supplies and what you use to like, level up your characters. So, now it's this guy's turn. He's going to come over here and hit me with his axe. He done one point of damage and one to the shield, or our armor. What that means is, where's our guy here? Um, I don't think we can view him. So now we're Gunnulf. This guy's a powerhouse with that massive sword. So we'll go here. This will take two of our willpower, but we've got another six waiting there. Now we've also got an ability. If you click on your own guy, you can use these kind of like purple abilities. This is Tempest, which will attack two characters. Um, so I guess we just do that and it should take them both down. Nice! And then Pillage kicks in. It's like a kind of like last man standing mode or like the last dude standing. So you get to go kind of mad. Um, so yeah, so basically there's no more like guaranteed turns, it says. Come on now. Can I just kill this guy with one hit? We'll use one willpower there. That'll give us the 9. So if you use willpower, you can do a stronger attack or you can move further. It's like basically pushing yourself further than you're meant to be able to go. Um, which is quite a cool mechanic. And we get 5 renown, which we can spend on leveling characters. Like a rabbit wolf. And now I'll shut up. How did it come to this? We fool ourselves believing that peace will last. My grandfather built all this from a poor fishing village, you know. He watched the gods die. Watched the chaos that followed. Watched man and bar slaughter each other, even before the dreads arose. All we've done is traded one struggle for another. Now that there are no more dreads to war against, we war against ourselves. This chieftain meant to kill me, and he's not the first. A dozen families in the city would gladly take my chair. This one had men waylaying merchants, both north and south of the city, strangling trade. Quite well, I would add. Though he denied it to his lust. This sort of wolf doesn't stop biting because the head is cut off. It just grows a new head. I am in a bad way, my friend. Help me finish this fight and I'll gladly send you on your way with double our king's tithe. Take any men you need. They're loyal. I promise you that. They will meet you down in the proving grounds. Okay, so chapter one, only the sun has stopped. Um, so basically what we are, we're like a Varl, which is like a giant dude. <laughs> a giant dude. We are like an old, this guy here called Udden, I think his name is, or Udden. Um, he's basically like a tax collector for like the emperor or the king or something to that description. And um, but basically this is like kind of like the, the RPG side of things where you're doing like story stuff. So it says, you're approached by a familiar man who walks in step with you as you're leaving the Great Hall. He cuts to the chase. So, Eric, um, Eric Steward of Strand, I manage the governor's business. Ubin, that's what's Ubin. Ubin, isn't it? So, um, you get a choice. So, as it said, your choices basically will impact what happens in the story. So I'm going to say it is because this guy's generally quite a nice old giant dude. He's strong as an ox, but he's old and he looks weathered. And I love the art in this game. I just want to say how incredible the music and the art is. The music is uh, composed by Austin Wintory, who is the guy that done the music for like Journey, which won like so many awards. People loved it. Anyway, I will say it is. So the governor tells me you'll be uh, giving us a hand. So we'll say, what did you have in mind? So Eric says, scafflings that uh, you didn't hack up in the Great Hall scattered after you took uh, out their chieftain. The governor just wants to make sure they stay down. Was hoping you'd join me in the marketplace by the docks. If there's anyone left to worry about, uh, I know who can tell us. 
Okay, so we're roped into this now. We've got no... Well, we do have a choice. We... So, so when you come to, like, these areas, this is like us, like, kind of stopped our caravan. Like, we've kind of, like, made camp, so to speak. And we can do various things. So... At the moment, um, usually you'll see highlighted areas. We've just got the market just now. Um, usually you'll see things like heroes, market, um, training, like various different things that you can do. And I love just having a look around. You can't like zoom in or anything, but I love the way the they've kind of done it in a like a layered type effort where things are like behind one another. So when you move, it kind of moves the perspective as well. If that makes any sense. Like, you can see that building, but now you can't see it because it's been, like, hidden by those. I, I love the way that the perspective is in this. Anyway, we'll go down to the market and see what's going down. So, he's... Mr. Eric, or whatever his name is, he's like, let me handle this. So, you meander through rows of open-faced houses and eroded stalls. Coloured canvases flap on a... On a briny current. Briny current? Briny? I think that's briny. <laughs> I think that means, like, salty from the air. Salty! Salty. Um, one man in particular blanches as you approach. So, Had, I'm not in the mood today. So, Had's this dude here. For, for what? Talking to an idiot. He's, this guy just takes a pound and he's just like, well, I, I exist to be walked over. I don't know what he's doing with his beard. It looks kind of strange. Anyway, the scaffolding's chieftain bled out about an hour ago, Had. So, when you tell me what rats... <laughs> <laughs> what rat anus the rest of them crawled into. Um, nobody's going to try and kill you this time. I don't talk to... They don't talk to me. Hmm. So, we um, now have a choice of what we can say. So, we can say, Eric, do you need some help here? Or, I don't have the patience for this, so say nothing. So, we're going to say, do you need some help here? So, had, I had a change of heart. I hope we don't give us a hard time. So, Had begins sweating, fumbling with his dirty trinkets on the table. Wait, just buy one of these. If everybody thinks that I'm getting worked over every week, how am I supposed to know much? Which is fair enough. I mean, if, if he's known to be like a... Like an informant, people will avoid him and not give him any information because they'll know he's just a, a, a mole, a rat. Just a little food money, yeah? Intimidate him. So you motion to Gunnolf, the big guy with the massive sword, your enormous bodyguard, who looms over the man like a snake over a mouse. God, Eric, laying it on a bit heavy, don't you think? Where are the scafflings? Or scalfings? I don't know. Sc scalfings! Yeah, scalfings. Nobleman up by the east wall. But that was months ago, last I know. Had skulks away with a wave of Eric's hand, gathering things from his hovel, disappearing for a while until this blows over. You figure, um, your bodyguard steps forward. Big gun elf, big gun elf, look at me, sir. They've all got glorious. Like, see, all the all the giants have like great facial hair, and just they just look awesome. And they've got these massive horns as well. They're like big rams. So are we done here? Gunnolf, you were wearing green back at the hall. Ah, okay, so no. So, were you wearing green? He said, sorry. And he says, no, I just bought it while we were walking around. Why? Um, you look like a frog. Better than an eggplant. Eric, that man of yours seems unreliable at best. So, we're just telling Eric here that we think had the. Like, can a dirty looking man is not very reliable? A blind dog wouldn't trust Had, but he used to be scalfing. If they're licking their wounds, they've probably gone to old haunts, not new ones. And we're asking, is the nobleman is a meat hall? Best I can tell, the name's ironic. <laughs> well, I suppose it is. Listen, I know a guy who would love um, to put a few of these scowls in the ground. I'm going to find him, I'll meet you there. Cool! Shouldn't we have an approach of some sort? What a luxury. Come on. You've already mopped up worse today. Okay, fair enough. Just make sure the governor remembers his promise. Double the usual tith. Or, yeah, I think tith is what it is. So basically we're saying we need to be paid double for sorting this shit out. We're, we're angry. We're angry at being roped into this. We're old and we're just tax collecting and we get brought into this nonsense. It's not even our fight. Um, so we go to the meat hall and we basically do some stuff. So... 
you arrive in front of what must be called the Nobleman. A few minutes later, Eric appears, with a weather-beaten man introduced as Valgard. I'll point them out. Eric stays over the shoulder, ready. Um, so we should just, I mean, we, we get a choice. We could say, I'd rather sit this one out and not do it, I think. Um, I've not done that yet, though. Or we can do your walking through the front door question, which you know, I just want to say, let's get it over with and just walk in and just dish out the pain. That's the spirit. <laughs> so this guy's just up for a fight. He's got a tash. Like, uh, it's, it's a glorious tash. Everyone's got a glorious tash in this. Even the women have the glorious moustaches in this game. It's wonderful. So the, the tashy man boots in the front door and um, he breaks it. Won't open without repairs. Um, you enter the hall. Eric is right at the head with the table with his axe drawn. Wide-eyed, drunken, scalping, scrambled to find their own weapons, turning tables and mead steins um, in the process. And then we're into another fight, which is the fun part. The good stuff. The strategy must be implemented for these things. So there's... Um, so we basically take control. I love looking about these... The, the, the like settings and the surroundings are always so well done. It looks amazing. Like, I can't even begin to describe how incredibly good this game looks. I mean, you can obviously make a judgement for yourself. But um, what we'll be doing then, so... I kind of fancy... Gunnolf over here because there's like a larger chunk of dudes. This guy's weak as balls, so he's going to come over here. This guy is just a bit of an idiot as well. We'll keep him there. And once we've positioned our men, so to speak, so we get to like position them in our half of the court. <laughs> the court! Um, kind of like chess almost, but you get to like specify where the pieces go. And you can hit ready. So we start with this guy here. Oi. Um, so... Does he have any ranged attack? You can do Stonewall, he can move, attack, rest. So you get choices of what you can do as well. What we're going to do is we're just going to walk up to... In fact, no. No, no, no. I think we're just going to rest. We're going to rest this turn and sit it out. Because there's no point in me walking all the way out there because someone will just walk into me and bash me. But if I stay here, he's done like a kind of annoying like flurry of stuff. I'm going to use an extra willpower to get over here and bash this guy one. Um, we can do five damage. Yeah, fuck it, five damage. We'll take the willpower. This guy's gonna fall like a sack of potatoes. And we'll just come over here. Just gonna, like... Uh, uh, it's gonna kind of concentrate itself on the left-hand side, or the right-hand side if we were looking from our perspective, but on this left side's where the majority of the stuff's going down. Um, we should end our turn. So, we are the big gentleman, and we're just gonna take this guy out. Easy as that. Gunolf is like a powerhouse. He does a lot of a lot of good stuff. So what I can do here, because it's not going to spend any willpower, we'll come over here, and we'll begin working on this guy. Hey. Sometimes it can be a bit awkward actually clicking on the dude. So I can take this guy out with two extra willpower. I want to take out as many little guys as possible. Um, I don't mind spending the willpower to do it because if they start working on our big guys. Damage done will reduce the amount of damage you can do. So when your health or the red part, the strength part, starts to go down, um, your attack goes down with that. So we want to kind of keep our guys as high as possible. We this guy. There we are. How many willpower you got? You've got four. Um, tempted to spend a willpower. And... We will... Do you want to work on shield or do we want to work on... Strength? I'll do a shield for this guy. And when you start breaking down shield or armor, it means that your attacks will be stronger the next again. This guy's probably going to get his ass handed to him. Um, we can come over here though. And maybe... Defeat this guy. No, um, I'll do four damage to you. There we go. Jolly good. So, th I've got this on normal difficulty. I've not got it too hard at the moment. Um... Normal seems fine by me. It's not easy enough, but it's not too difficult. Um, do I want to work on this guy? Yeah. Okay. Reduce your health to one. See, because his attack has been brought down so low, less than what our armor is, he can't actually hit us. His shots are deflected now. Um, so we are this dude. This is when things get slightly confusing and, and kind of busy, but we'll come over here, I think, and we'll... Can I kill this guy? Yeah, I can. Okay, he's getting taken down straight away. Good. So this guy's getting his ass handed to him again. He... 
Who are we? Well, oh, we are the little guy. Okay. I guess we'll do three attack to you. Bring you down. Knock you down a peg. So, as you can see, because they're getting worried now, they're coming over here. I'm just going to stand in here. Concentrate the battle. And can I take this guy out? No, maybe if I hit this guy. Yeah, I'll kill this guy because I can. Means there's one less guy to worry about. Yep, Eric's down. He has been bested. So the good thing is that your characters can be taken down in battle, but as long as you win overall, you um, you will prevail. So this guy's dead. And we can promote Gunulf. We can level him up. Promotions through ranks are like kind of leveling your character up. Um, so who are we now with this guy? Okay, so we can do a good 8 attack to you. Dealt with. So I, I, I really can't see me losing this from here. <laughs> um... So we're this guy, I can do four attack to you or Hmm. Who's got the more stuff? In fact they're both pretty much equal. I'll I'll go for this guy then. We'll use our willpower because we're not gonna need much of it. So yeah, they're trying to they're working us, they're trying to work us, but they're not gonna survive. Uh, no no not in turn. No 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 not at all. Wanna attack this guy for eight? Boom! Dead. Gunolf is just a powerhouse. So now we're down to um Now we're down to the last guy we're on to what's it called again? It's called uh, Pillage! Oh wait, no, I've, I've I've made a mistake there. Damn! Well it doesn't matter because we can now bash this guy and he's dead! Good. And pretty much that's the, the battling system. It's a little complex, it's not incredibly difficult to get your head around. So we've Promoted gun up or we can in a second. We get 10 renown for that. Sweet. So Eric, there they are. Gods be damned. I've got to go wash off this blood. So Eric is looking at the hall's window at the bay. A fleet of longship approaches with sails of blood red, or oh, bold red, sorry, and blues. One banner I know well, Vognir. Next for Varro Kingship, last we spoke. So Vognir is like the the giants, like, king in making, I suppose you would say. Um, the other flag looks important. Yeah, important guest, uh, guests. See what I deal with all day long? Oh, poor Eric. Having stressful jobs to do. Ah, uh, things make a little more sense. You hoped I'd have a, a stake in saying everything's fine here when the royal guests arrived. Not me, the governor. So basically, yeah, they're saying we wanted this shit sorted before the royalty comes and has a snoop around. Now I have to make sure there are no rotting bodies or pools of entrails still in the Great Hall before they come by. Can I ask you one more favour? Yes, go on, we're a nice old guy. If you happen to stall our guest down at the docks, I wouldn't object. Maybe I will. And they hustle out. To his credit, Eric tosses the barkeep a spar of silver for the mess. You give an apologetic shrug and go to meet or go to greet the new arrivals down at the docks.